Alright guys, welcome back to Farming Simulator 19. My name is Drake. I am the Farming Aviator. We are ready to plant. We are planting canola as you can see here. It is 43... I think it's 43 degrees. 46 degrees already. Ground temperature. Looking up in the upper right hand corner. Um, the third column from the center. Uh, outside air temps 45. It's still kind of cool out. A little breezy today. Oops, wrong one. Let's see here. And uh, our minimum ground temp here for our canola is 43. So we're going to get that in. We go up to our uh, crop rotation. Uh, our field A. Sorry, field B, that's the one we're planting, is canola. Alright, let's get to it. Last uh, night I got, after uh, finishing cultivating that field, I got the uh, cedar all hooked up. So we got the big terminator, if that's what it's called. This thing is amazing. Just love running this thing. Uh, we may be, this thing is pretty old though, so we may be in the market for a new one here. Um, we'll see. We'll see about that. Um, I uh, just hooked it up with the 8345, but we are not going to be pulling this with this. Uh, it requires, I think, 450 horsepower. Um, so we got to switch tractors here. We are going to use the 9570RT. Super excited. Got that unhooked. Let's go park this thing the 9570 out and uh, I'll see you guys in the field all right so I got hooked up I just realized I didn't really show you guys the uh, bottom half of our uh, farmland here of our uh, farm we got uh, the seed trailer with the seed and fertilizer over there ready to go here down here we have the uh, all our silos I think we can hold about 800,000 liters, something like that. Let me hop out of here. Um, so that's kind of nice. And then uh, we got a bale shed down here. We keep our uh, headers and stuff and the uh, cultivator down here. And then back here we got a little warehouse. Uh, this is where we're keeping all the semi trucks and uh, trailers and stuff like that. It's kind of back here out of the way. You see, we got a couple Mac anthems. Just love this truck. I think this is my favorite truck. And then we got this uh, older European truck, this uh, Tatra Phoenix. Uh, this thing is just kind of fun to drive. Does all the odd jobs and stuff. And then a the nice thing too, you see under there, it's got a hitch on the back too. So you can hook up to regular trailer. So sometimes I use that to move uh, some equipment around, that kind of thing. Or if it needs to go to the shop, I'll just hook up to that. So. Alright, the field of Rubicon uh, is this one right here. We already got lime spread over the whole thing. Um, so I'm going to get in the field, get uh, everything set up, and uh, we'll see you there. Alright, welcome back. We had a few issues with the GPS getting that set up, and then a blockage in uh, one of the tubes back here that we had to fix uh, going to one of the actual drills. So. Uh, we had to take some time to sort that out. The GPS uh, wasn't getting the toolbar width right. Uh, so we had to go in and manually set that um, and get that fixed. Uh, so we're going now. Everything looks good on the cedar. Looks like we're, we're getting everything in the ground nicely. Uh, let me pull up the uh, field view map here. You see we're on uh, field 22 here. This is our farm right here. Here's the field. So it's uh, our biggest field that we're planting here with canola. Um, so it's going to take a while. Uh, I think this uh, toolbar is only 60 feet wide. Uh, so not the biggest. And that's why I kind of hit that. Well, maybe I might be in a market for a um, bigger cedar here in the future. Or we can knock these acres out a little bit quicker. It will be a little more efficient. Uh, and uh, that'll help us in the long run. 
Plus the Cedar's old, it's uh, not as efficient as some of the uh, newer ones. So uh, we, we'd have that working for us with the new one too. So the nice thing about this uh, 9RT, it takes nice sharp turns and the Cedar can handle it just fine. I'm really happy with this purchase. And so we just passed an hour on it. First hour. So uh, that's awesome. Yeah, this thing just has tons of power. Pulls this no problem. Uh, some of the uh, other seeders require quite a bit more power. Uh, one of them requires that 640. So I don't think this one would quite be able to pull it. Uh, but there's another one by Borgalt that is slightly smaller. I don't remember how many feet it is, but uh, it's quite a bit bigger than this one. It's a full between model. So let me pull it up in the shot. Go to Cedars. This is the other one I was looking at, the Vatterstad, but it requires 640 horsepower. So we need a lot bigger tractor, but there's uh, this one by Borrego, uh, it's 500 horsepower and it's uh, 23.2 meters. So that's quite a bit bigger than this one uh, that we're running right now, it's 18 meters, which is 60 feet. So uh, that would be a lot nicer. But how's our weeds growing? We just planted that. Alright, well, we'll be spraying weeds soon. So as you can see, this field is a little rough. Uh, we just plowed it. I uh, didn't cultivate it because I knew we were going to be using the seed of the cedar. Uh, it makes a nice seed bed uh, for all the seeds already. Um, it kind of has some diggers on it right when it plant, I go through right when it plants the seed. So uh, it puts down a nice seed bed as it's seeding. So we didn't need to cultivate it after. Um, one of our other fields, I think we're planting corn. So that one we'll have to cultivate before we um, plant corn. Because our corn planter, we got to cultivate before using that. So I'm going to go on this grass a little bit here. That's alright. I know this guy doesn't mind. So we'll do come back and do the end rows last. All right. So hope you guys had a good weekend. First part of your week. Middle of the week here. I know I'm always kind of posting on Wednesdays here. Uh, that works out best for me. Let me know if you guys like that. Uh, not much going on, just uh, hanging out in quarantine. Uh, I'm not sure when I'll get around to posting this video. I know Arizona extended their stay-at-home orders to May 15. I think this uh, post will probably come out right around that time. So we'll see what happens going forward. But, you know, stay safe out there, guys. Alright, so plans for uh, this farm to go up our crop rotation plant. We are planting canola in this field. Field A is the one just to the west of here, and that one's going to be soybeans. So we'll use the cedar to plant soybeans too. Um, it just works easier. I can fertilize and plant at the same time. Um, so we'll just do that. Uh, field C is our small one right by the shop. That one's going to be corn. So that one we still have to cultivate. Uh, we'll probably be doing that right after this. I'll uh, probably just unhook this and head over there and show you guys that field. And then uh, we have soybeans in the field we... Yeah, that's the field we cultivated in the last video. Um, but that field we also still need to plow and cultivate again. So. 
Soybeans uh, require a uh, ground temperature, uh, 50 degrees, same thing with corn. So uh, you see we still got a few more screws to go. I think it'll be another day yet before we can start planting that, but uh, we've got plenty of time to get that in the ground. I might uh, take a look at the weather here though, once we uh, get done with this turn. So like I said, we'll come back and do the end rows here. This again. There we go. It's all set. All right. So if you look at our weather here today, mid 60s should be pretty nice. Same thing tomorrow. So we might try to knock out a bunch of planting tomorrow because we got rain coming up. So let's just stay in the mid 60s and. Uh, I think uh, this is going to be the last day of spring, but uh, corn and uh, soybean planting we can go into the beginning of summer. Let's see here, uh, even soybeans middle of summer. So uh, yeah, we'll just uh, we'll play it by ear. Corn I like to get in the ground as soon as possible. Soybeans just because uh, you got plenty of time to plant those. I do those last, so we'll probably see the corn planting next, and then soybeans. Alright guys, I had to bring you back to this spot. It's kind of a weird edge corner turn right here, and how the GPS lined up on it didn't really match up. I think we're just going to have to come in from this angle and then drop once we get past the corner. There we go, there's our line. If I drop it right on the corner here. There we go. All right. So we got about a quarter, maybe a third, ah, maybe not a third, about a quarter of the field done, and uh, we're running out of fertilizer. I think what happened was uh, on those first couple rows where I was trying to get everything set up and working, we were dropping extra fertilizer. So hopefully we didn't ruin that crop in those first couple rows. Um, but yeah, we're going to have to go back to the yard here and get some more fertilizer. Um, so I'll probably offload from that uh, semi-trailer first. Um, and then we have a fertilizer tank over there. Um, so then we'll probably uh, pull from that after that. So, but uh, this tank, this air cart only holds about 4,600 liters of fertilizer. I think that's what it was. Um, so it's not a whole lot. Usually it stays pretty even though. Uh, but the seeder kind of calculates where we planted seed and doesn't plant extra, but it still drops fertilizer. So it's kind of a weird design. And I think we kind of messed that up in those first couple rows. Um, so yeah, we'll have to go fill up here soon. I think I'll be able to make one more down and back. And then we'll go fill up. See you.
just finished up in that field, got everything, all the canola planted. And you see it's already just about seven at night. Um, the shop though called me and said there's a cultivator sitting there waiting for us to demo. Uh, they needed, uh, they just wanted someone to demo the equipment. Uh, we, they noticed uh, we hadn't really demoed anything from them this year, basically just because we, you know, just moved here. And so uh, they left it there for us to pick up, use it in the next few days. So we're going to jump in the 8370R and uh, use that. The, uh, I think it's a disc arrow. It doesn't use too much horsepower, so we're going to head down there and grab that and then get in the field. All right, welcome back guys. I got everything set up. We are in the 8370RT, pulling the uh, Horse Joker 12XL, I think that's what it is. Uh, but it's a uh, disc arrow, you see we're cruising along at 10 miles an hour. This thing uh, is working pretty nice. You look at our field, it's all uh, kind of choppy right now because we plowed it. Um, so we are using this to kind of chop up any clumps and stuff and uh, smooth out the field. So yeah, I'm just kind of making, uh, skipping every other row and then we'll come back and uh, cover those. It just makes it easier for turning. Uh, even though these RTs can turn super sharp, uh, it's kind of just easier, smoother uh, to uh, skip every other one. You see it's already uh, 7.30 at night, it's starting to get dark, so I want to get a little footage before it gets dark. Here's the 8370RT. These tractors are so much fun to drive, a lot like the uh, 9RT. You see if you look at this uh, uh, disc there though, it's got discs on the front with grooves and stuff. Those will uh, chop into anything that's left over um, and uh, make it nice and even. And then we got these uh, kind of rolling baskets or rolling wheels on the back um, that are evenly spaced. And I'll kind of pack it down just a little bit uh, as well as smooth it out. Um, so that's uh, that's the goal with uh, what we're doing here. Just trying to make a nice even seed bed uh, for this corn. So uh, these disc arrows are nice. They don't require quite as much power as a, a regular cultivator. I think this one only requires 360 um, versus like 450, 500, I think 500 maybe our regular cultivator requires. Um, so it's quite a bit less. It is slightly smaller, but you can also go faster with this, uh, just a little bit faster. Um, so that's that's nice. I get to, you get a little bit more work done that way, and. Uh, Everything goes a little bit quicker. I think this is a 40 foot. Let's see, a little bit off there. Uh, yeah, I think this is a 40 foot tool. So uh, it's still, you know, it's still decent wide, decently wide. So I think uh, we got this demoed over the next couple of days. So I think we're gonna go back over. Uh, use this instead of the uh, plow on our uh, potato field that we cultivated up in the last video. Uh, this will be a little bit easier on the field uh, but still do the same job as a plow would with uh, chopping up that residue uh, since that crop had all withered and uh, there's still uh, a lot of crop in the field. So we'll probably go over uh, the field with this and uh, then use the regular digger cultivator one more time and then plant in that field. So, well, before it gets too dark here, I'm gonna get just a little bit of time lapse footage getting into the nighttime here so you guys can see that.
9 o'clock at night here. We are got a little more than a third of this field done. Um, it goes by pretty quick going at 10 miles an hour. So that's nice. Uh, but we'll come back, finish this in the morning. Uh, we're just about at the end of this row. So I'm going to fold this up and head home for the night. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit that uh, like button if you did. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you guys don't miss anything. And uh, feel free to comment on, uh, let me know what you think. Alright, we'll see you guys next time.